everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. So here we are on the other side of the CPI print for July and lo and behold, it was a surprise to the downside. Expectation was 8.7% on the headline, but we got 8.5. And expectation on the core CPI was 6.1, we got 5.9. So one of the things that's, that people have been talking about and I think makes sense is that it's kind of this core CPI print that some people are pointing to as being more important than the headline. And the reason is that core CPI tends to be stickier. It's kind of the, the inflation that's harder to get rid of. Whereas, you know, headline inflation has factors in it that are a lot more volatile, kind of it's it's less, uh, it's more transitory, it's less, you know, sticky. And so overall, this is just kind of good news for risk assets, most likely. I made a video yesterday previewing what to expect with the CPI print. And I said, if we get a surprise to the downside, that's gonna potentially be a green light for risk assets. And I thought if we got, if we just hit expectation or if we're actually above expectation, that would be quite bearish. So the fact that we came in below and it was a surprise to the downside, then my base case still stands. You know, it's a green light for risk assets. And if we look over at Bitcoin, the market seems to be agreeing with me. We can see that, you know, we rallied uh, about three and a half percent on the day today. And now we're, we're you know, starting the new candle um, for August 11th and we're still up there as well. So it's still a little too early to know if that's going to be kind of the the sentiment the, mo the market sticks with. You know, I think over the next couple of days we'll have more confirmation if we're generally trending up. But you know, so far so good. And my ba the the kind of my base case stands here that I think the the CPI print was what people were de-risking in front of. But now that that's not seeming to pose any problem, I think it's very reasonable that this kind of risk on rally continues at least for a while. And I think it's not just going to be um, Bitcoin either. If we look over here at Ethereum, you know, it's also continuing its rally. And I had, you know, said with Ethereum that it's been getting quite overextended. You know, when we look at our short term risk indicator we have here on the channel, the short term UDPI, it shows ETH getting quite overextended on the short term, but not, you know, exceedingly so, you know, there still is room for the short term UDPI to move up higher, but it's starting to get up into higher levels where a pullback is more and more expected. And really what I had said, you know, yesterday was that, you know, any, any excuse that the bears had, they would take to dump Ethereum was my expectation. But if they didn't get that excuse, if CPI, the CPI came as a surprise to the downside, then Ethereum could have more room to run. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Now, how much higher Ethereum can go is an open question. And um, I wanna actually talk about, you know, what we might look at now going forward with both these assets. So now that we're, we're on Ethereum, let's just talk about that. Then I do wanna flip back over to Bitcoin talk about some things that are relevant to that. So the first thing I wanna just look at here is just the volume profile um, for Ethereum, just kind of looking back into earlier in 2021 through the current level. And the thing that's really interesting about what ETH is doing right now is it's retesting, let me just get rid of this for uh, temporarily, it's retesting this level that acted as support three times in the summer of 21, and then also acted as temporary support back here in May of this year before you know we had that big capitulation to the downside going into June. And now we're starting to retest that level. So there is some structural resistance here. So we've, we've pushed above, you know, some of these levels already, you know, we're kind of kind of moving up. When we look at the volume profile, we can see that a lot of volume transacted at these levels. Now it's an open question how much cost basis still exists from back here, you know, how many people bought down here and just held it through this whole time, open question. But this is a price level that people have interacted with a lot. There's been a lot of uh, ETH that's changed hands at this price level. And that can mean that this would act as meaningful resistance. Now it is notable that we are starting to at least uh, potentially slice up through this level, at least moving into this one. And if we can get up, up above that, that actually starts opening up the skies to these higher levels, maybe even all the way up above 2000. Now, I think we'd have to really see some strength with ETH for it to rally that far on this run, but anything is possible. And so it's gonna be interesting to watch what ETH does. If it just keeps on going on a just a crazy run, you know, where it's right now pushing up towards 1900, you know, if we push up above 2000, those levels become a lot more into play. And certainly what this means for ETH is we just look at it in this relation to its 200 week moving average, which is, is a level that people kind of look at as being important during bearish times. We're clearing well above the 200 week moving average now with ETH. You know, it's well above that at this point, suggesting that it is definitely in a more bullish moment right now. Now, again, the, one of the things with ETH, though, is that it's really being driven in part by the narrative around the merge, which is probably coming up pretty soon. You know, I think the expectation the merge will happen 
in September. And so, you know, this very well could be a rally up until that event, and then a big sell the news type of situation where it will dump afterwards. We'll have to wait and see, but that certainly is the kind of the setup that this seems to be forming, that this is rallying into the event, and oftentimes when that happens, you then get a sell-off after the event. So that's kind of one of my expectations with ETH is it that if it, you know, if nothing from the macro picture gets in the way of this rally, it very well keep, could keep on pushing up until we get closer to um, the date of the merge. Um, and again, I'll be watching data like the short-term UDPI to see if it gets super overextended, you know, all the way up to four um, to five range. You know, that I would say that's very extremely likely to, to be topping off. Right now, we are were, we were somewhere in the, the ballpark of two. Um, so we still have some room to move to the upside on that. Now let's go over here to Bitcoin and talk about what we might expect with this. So one of the things with Bitcoin has been a lot more anemic in this run up than Ethereum. You know, Ethereum has been just charting a course to the upside, just going ham. Bitcoin has just been kind of just slowly chopping up. It's been kind of, you know, disappointing. You know, anyone who is only only getting into to Bitcoin down here, you know, you're probably not too happy that you're missing out on some of these gains from, uh, from other assets. But, but the good news from today in the CPI print is that we're pushing up, you know, further above the 200 weeks of moving average. And this is one of the things that I talked about before, that we really want to be able to turn this into support to be able to think that this might start looking like a bottom. Because again, that's what we see in previous bottoming points, that when you go down to it, you want to get back up and hold it as support, and then you can start moving back up. If you fail to hold it as support, then more downside can happen. Really, the the one of the only kind of big examples of that is if we just look back here, you know, kind of broke above in 2015, then had to come back down, consolidate more before breaking back up. If we can go ahead and just hold it as support and continue moving up, this might actually mean a more, more um, longer lasting rally might be in the offing. And so this is good news. And I, I was really kind of worried that if we got an unfavorable CPI print, we would just slice back through the 200 week that actually might set us up for new lows coming in after that. I haven't seen that. So the possibility of the 200 week holding is a lot more likely now than it would have been if the CPI print came out negative. So one other thing I do want to talk about though, just in terms of the overall setup that Bitcoin's seeing right now, is I want to just switch over to our risk indicator. So I was talking about the short-term UDPI for ETH a minute ago. This is the long-term UDPI for Bitcoin. I do just want to mention what we might expect if we do see a more protracted uh, rally from Bitcoin right now of, of where that might go, kind of how much upside we might actually expect from that by looking at times in the past where we've entered these kind of risk levels that we're currently at. So I'm just going to show the raw level because I think that's where we can see what I want to talk about most clearly. And so, you know, if you're not familiar with the, the UDPI, it's a risk indicator. So higher levels are higher risk, uh, lower levels, lower risk. You can see that, you know, during market cycle peaks, that's when the UDPI gets up into this highest level between four and five. And at, at and around bottoms of bear markets is when we get down to below negative four. Well, what you'll notice with the UDPI, uh, at least the long-term UDPI, is that we rarely just go in and, and touch negative four and just um, only do that once in a given market cycle, right? You know, we'll have oftentimes a bottom, we get down right near negative five, and then we come down, we revisit below negative four multiple times. And that can even happen while the price is, is moving up. So you can see the price is moving up, but yet risk is remaining low, which, you know, makes sense. This was a great time to buy, if you look at it, going into this big parabolic move. Same with here, you know, price was starting to move up down at negative four and we were moving up. It's this idea, it's it's risk, you know, basically when do you, you know, how risky are things that go down, you know, price can be moving up and risk can still be quite low. And that's what we've seen in the past year as well. And then in the, the market cycle coming up into um, 2020, or excuse me, 2021, you know, we had a bottom here that we actually rallied out of in 2018 then we did actually come back and retest this back in the march 2020 crash now you could argue that was a black swan who knows if that would have happened again who knows but certainly it did happen and so far so so far bitcoin's always kind of had hung out at these levels um multiple times so that's kind of making me suspect that we you know it seems reasonable to think that we'll likely do that again so we might see some some nice upside from here. So maybe we see something like this, see some reasonable upside, and then kind of correct a bit, kind of have to move sideways, have uh, risk cool back off before going back up. And what that might just mean is that, you know, feeling FOMO right now might be um, a, a bad idea. 
the idea is that Bitcoin off, oftentimes will get you multiple uh, bites of the apple before going nuts, right? You'll see it. You get the, the main drop where you want to buy it the most, but then a second chance or maybe even a third chance before the real main part of the, the move happens. You know, one chance, two chances, you know, three chances, even four chances before we go ripping to the upside. And then again here, you know, one one time, two times before ripping off. And, you know, even levels like this are still quite attractive before we rip off to the upside. So my expectation is that this rally will not just take us off into all-time highs and that anyone who's not buying down here is just going to completely miss it and there won't be any dips to be bought later. You know, it could be the case that this will be the would have been the best time to buy back here. But, you know, if you're if you're looking at buying here versus buying here, not really going to be that much of a difference, you know, once you're all the way up here. I don't know if people are really going to be all that worried about it. And certainly what you don't want to get yourself stuck in is that if this were to just be a bear market rally right right me, like here and you buy in really heavily right here because you're feeling FOMO you don't want to be the person then that has to ride it all the way down here so just some things to keep in mind and so obviously not financial advice you should make your own own decisions if you think buying now is the right time by all means go for it but that's just the way that I think about it that you know with these kind of things these play out over a long period of time and rarely is that the case that you'll just totally miss the boat you might miss the quote kind of best time but you're not going to it's not going to be likely the only time to get a good deal if we are about to go into a more bullish phase in the market also why a lot of people talk about uh, dollar cost averaging so you don't even have to worry about if it's a good or bad time to buy you're just kind of scaling into the market or using something like the edpi to weight your dc your your dollar cost averaging so you're buying the most heavily or you're averaging in the most heavily when we're down in these risk levels and then you're adding still you know kind of going all the way up to zero but just kind of less and less and less as we get up to there then more and more and more if we come back down you can imagine it's kind of waiting as we go through here, getting overall a pretty good cost basis before the, the big move to the upside. So just something I wanted to mention, because when you see these kind of things happen, sometimes it's easy to feel FOMO, you know, feel like, oh, I got to get in right now. I'm going to miss it. Oftentimes, that's not the case. Oftentimes, things play out over a longer period. Again, not financial advice. That's just my opinion. So my base case of where we go from here is I do think that some reasonable upside in the crypto market is very plausible for the next little while. I think the CPI print you know, paints uh, a rosier picture. I think it kind of clears the way to some degree and it lets this rally continue should it want to. Um, obviously things could come up that could derail that or the market could just on its own decide that it no longer wants to rally and it could just dump. But my base case is that we're gonna see some upside from here. But I don't think we're just gonna go ripping off to all time highs. And if this were to be the beginning of a new uh, bullish trend, which I think is way too early to say that that's happening, I still think there's going to be plenty more bites at the apple, so FOMO is probably not worth it right now. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter. We've got a lot of updates, better indicators, and more over there.